113th meeting, the battle for Floyd of Rosedale, and off we go from Iowa City with a touchback. Hawkeyes won the toss and choose to receive. So they'll have the ball first. Here's Nate Stanley, three-year starter at quarterback. He's third all-time in yards at Iowa. He's second in touchdowns, trailing just Chuck Long. Actually grew up about 70 miles from Minneapolis in Menominee, Wisconsin, and now faces the Gophers for the final time in his career. Yeah, he's battling a little bit of sickness this week as well. Had a hard time talking to us yesterday. Not, not, no fever, nothing crazy like that. But like a lot of this Iowa team has been battling a bunch this year. And a little surprised to start with the ball. I think this sets the tone of an aggressive mindset they want to have tonight. And you notice right away Tyler Goodson, true freshman tailback, getting his first career start. As Stanley's back to throw on the first play. He's got Amir Smith-Marset, but it was underthrown and incomplete. Boy, Smith-Marset had a couple steps on Benjamin St. Juice. And a missed opportunity on the first play for Iowa offensively. That speaks to that aggressive mindset. Tristan Wirfs, as good as there is at right tackle in all of college football. Man, is he ever fun to watch. Sets the tone for that offensive line. Yeah, and you're right. You're going to see a true freshman an awful lot. That's Tyler Goodson, the, the, the running back. He's their most dynamic perimeter player. They want to get the ball to him as many ways as possible. He's got to be a factor tonight. And a flack. Head referee today, Jerry McGinn. Offside. Defense. Number 18. With contact. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's Micah Du Treadway. Minnesota, the least penalized team in the country in the three years under PJ Fleck. That little note right there says that drives me crazy. <laughs> You're as close to the football as anybody. <laughs> Just watch the ball, but I think these guys and these gophers want to get off the ball tonight as well. Second down and five. First run for Goodson. Makes a nice move and sets up third down and short against this Minnesota defense with seven starters up front that are seniors. All battle tested, none more so than Carter Coughlin. The guy is violent with his hands, plays the run just as well as he does the pass. The second level, they welcome back Kamal Martin at linebacker. He is their most athletic player sideline to sideline. And no one better in college football than Antoine Winfield on the back end. Seven interceptions, just one more. And he sets the single season mark at Minnesota. When Iowa's lost last week in Madison, they went one for nine on third down. Here's third and one. And it's a flip to the wide open field, and Tyler Goodson showing off some of that big playability. First down into Gopher territory on a 26 yard run with some misdirection. Yeah, nobody runs more QB sneaks in Iowa with huge success, and you can see all eyes there get inside, get locked in, and you just break containment. That's as easy as it could possibly get, and that's exactly what Iowa wanted to see, had to see. Big Out difference, Brock, in wins versus losses when you're talking about that run game. 53 yards per game on the ground in the three losses, all to rank teams. Sets up their play pass, which is also a dangerous element for them. First down from the 41. Goodson again. This time hit in the backfield. He settles for a gain of two as Du Treadway brings him down. Just one third down conversion a week ago in a game that, as Kirk Ferentz was saying to us yesterday, they wanted to just slow down, minimize possessions, right? Get it to, to the fourth quarter with Wisconsin. A little different approach today. And I think by taking the ball and taking a shot on first down, you feel that. They want to be aggressive. He, Kirk Ferentz knows they've got to score points against a crew on the other side that's averaging 36 a game. Can't just play it in a phone booth and a couple shots here. On the opening drive. And it wasn't until they started to play faster that they had any semblance of offense in that game, scoring 16 points in the fourth. Field two point conversion kept them from tying it. Here's a heave hole for Smith Marset, and again, incomplete. Again, he had room with St. Just in coverage. Yeah, this is a double move, and the first one was a go route that was underthrown, and these are the shots the senior needs to hit. Smith Marset sells it beautifully, that in cut, and you can see the bite and even the hold by St. Juice that he gets away with, but you got someone that open. What have I said all season long? Don't overthrow. Yeah. Under through the first one, overthrows that one, but Iowa perhaps thinks they have something here, Smith Marset, against Benjamin St. Juice. Well, they've had two near touchdowns. Third down nine on the opening Iowa possession. Stanley pressured. 
out of a collapsing pocket able to keep it alive he takes off and spins within a yard of the first down marker it's fourth and one there is an injured Minnesota player that's the redshirt freshman backup linebacker Braylon Oliver and fourth down a little more than a yard seems like this is go for it territory even with one of the nation's best kickers yeah this is uh, this is the area they do love that QB sneak run the flip nine earlier on the third and one but when you've got a 240 pound senior quarterback and some guys at running back and fullback and tight end that can push the pile that has been the go to thus far through nine games. Brian Ferentz offensive coordinator have been more and more aggressive on fourth down through the years and here on the first drive of the day they're going to go for it on fourth and one. They empty it out and for the moment have Stanley in the shotgun. He's back to throw on fourth and short delivers a strike for a first down to Nate Weeding the fifth year senior back from injury. How about that play call on fourth and short. Yeah, how about the exact opposite of what you have done over the course of this season. But when you've struggled the way they have offensively you do have to mix it up just a three man rush by the Gophers an excellent pocket and unlike the deep shots into the wind that have gotten away from Stanley that was a bullet right between the three and nine. One of the big drop offs in this offense is losing T.J. Hawkinson Noah Fant both into the first round of the draft tight ends last year. That's just the 15th catch by a tight end this year on first and ten Stanley scan of the field finds Reganey inside the five and in for the Iowa touchdown the red shirt freshman from 21 yards well it was a go route on first down it was a cross and go later and how about the double move here you think they've seen these gophers be aggressive in the secondary Right, that is three different play calls on your script to make sure you attack that back end of that defense that has wanted to be aggressive that has sat on some of those routes in Iowa. What an opening drive for these Hawk Hawkeyes to really mix it up and break their tendencies and an issue here on the point after and it remains six nothing. And of course something you remember as this game goes on when you figure that it'll be close. I heard you mention the word aggressive what three four times on that first drive an offense that was criticized for being perhaps a little bit too conservative in Madison they find different ways to get it done here eight plays 75 yards in an early Iowa lead Hawkeyes go 75 yards in eight plays and it's Nico Regani with the game's first touchdown and push the ball down the field the go route the in and go a beautiful little corner out right there by Regani and just Excellent aggressiveness and then unfortunately falter here on the hold. To back up punter Colton Rastetter that good, is the holder. Good enough snap. We've not seen that much this year and unfortunately when you're a holder the only time you ever get recognized is when you make a mistake. You never get the credit for making the right hold. But the ball gets away from him and I think you called it appropriately in a game that many are fixing is going to be awfully close. That point could come into play later. 38 year old P.J. Fleck that seven year extension signed last week through 2026 seems like he's found the perfect home for his row the boat mantra his style of course winning of course is going to make any style sure. feel right but there's just something about this match that seems perfect and he has dealt with adversity you know over the course of his career different programs that he has built but certainly dealing with prosperity for these guys and as much as you want to teach and preach there's nothing quite like experience. And none of them have handled the success that they had a week ago. The emotion that they, you know, just spent there in that win over Penn State was remarkable. First top five win in 20 years for the Gophers. P.J. Flack gave the game ball to the governor. I mean, just to show you where things are at with this Minnesota football program, he said it was kind of a gesture of his appreciation to the people of the state of Minnesota, which is really fired up about this Minnesota squad at nine and oh one of five remaining unbeatens in college football. This is Cam Wiley. 
Wiley hurdles to the 21 and that's where Minnesota's first drive of the day will begin with Tanner Morgan took over the starting job midway through last season went four and two and then had to win the job again during camp and what a season he's had that passer rating is top five in the country and it includes an 18 of 20 performance against Penn State last week and just a perfect fit for a P.J. Fleck program. Does not need all the attention. Loves to distribute. This is a team that runs at 65% of the time. And Tanner really the perfect point guard to play off that run game. Number two scoring offense in the Big Ten behind just Ohio State. And they put up 31 on one of the nation's best defenses last week. The sixth year senior Rodney Smith with the first touch of the day behind this huge I mean huge offensive line 6'6 six, six and 340 they are missing though their right guard Curtis Dunlap did not make the trip here to Iowa City so they slide Connor Olson over John Michael Schmitz who's played a ton of balls really their sixth lineman anyway he will slide in and play some center today yeah they are big they are physical and they set the tone for all those skill guys including Rodney Smith to get it done. The Dunlap was injured in last week's game. Here's Wiley swinging out. And that is Christian Welch who's missed the last few games with an injury hitting him first. They're down coming up against one of the top five defenses statistically in the country. These Hawkeyes sound and salty and it starts with their front four. Epinesa led the Big Ten a year ago in sacks. The numbers aren't there, but the presence certainly still is. Having Christian Welch back, the middle linebacker, is enormous for these Hawkeyes. He's the senior. He settles everybody down. And a little bit movement in their secondary as well. They will be without Michael O.J. Mudia. He is out, and Riley Moss will start in his place. Third down seven on Minnesota's first drive. Morgan's first throw of the day is to a wide open Tyler Johnson first down to the 41 to the senior out of Minneapolis North advantage senior on true freshman Nickelback Dane Belton this is one of the areas going to be awfully tough today for Iowa to defend they love to get in third and extra long situations but you see a senior with his strength with his patience and the true freshman Belton's going to learn an awful lot going against one of the best slot receivers in college football. They put you in such a tough spot, this Minnesota team. You talk about how good they are on the ground, but they also have two of the best receivers in the conference. And then you go down to the third receiver in Chris Altman Bell. It is as good of a wide receiver group as you're going to find in the country. On first down from the 41, Rodney Smith takes the fake. It's hit at the line by Chauncey Golston, and it's second and ten. That is such sound football. That is a run pass option. 50% of the passing game plus for the Gophers is exactly this. And if you're playing defensive end, you've got to have an awareness for that. You can't just close your eyes and, and smash down into your gap to stop the run. You've got to feel that offensive lineman, feel the routes behind you, and perfect timing knocking down the first down pass. The junior out of Detroit in his first year as a starter, his defense had to replace a lot, but in a lot of ways even better than last year, which sent five players to the NFL. On second and ten and the run pass option hit at the line again and incomplete and on back to back plays Tanner Morgan has the number of incompletions that he did the entire game last week. And I think that was the middle linebacker Welch who again gets into that passing lane Tanner's not six foot four. He's got to find those throwing lanes and this is just excellent defense and awareness by the Hawkeyes. Not surprised it's a redshirt junior and then the senior you can see that's a completion to Bateman but instead it's another third and extra long exactly where Iowa wants these Gophers to have to live 11 percent against Iowa's defense when they get him in third and seven and longer Morgan well protected down the seam he's got Demetrius Douglas for a first down only his ninth catch of the season but in those nine some huge ones that's back to back now third and seven plus trying to play two man it's man coverage underneath two deep safeties in both times it's advantage gophers and now you can extend that not just to your top three receivers Joe but now you're looking at your fourth receiver and once again excellent patience a good pocket and Morgan delivers on third down. We talked off at the top about the tight wins in non-conference play for the Gophers. One of those tight wins, they faced third and 29 from their own six in the final minutes against Georgia Southern, and Douglas had back-to-back -back huge catches. 
They go to Smith on first down. He's stopped by Christian Welch. Yeah, this is where they're different this year. 37 points a game in week number 10 is not a fluke. You have dynamic people on your perimeter. You've got a physical group up front. And Rodney Smith, the guy that's rushed for nearly 4,000 yards in his six years in Minnesota. And that little play right there is a big reason why they're not just an inside between the tackle team. That outside stretch zone has been an excellent second pitch they've developed this year. Now during that non-conference struggle, you say struggle relatively, they still won the games, but they weren't running it the way they have over the last few weeks. Chris Ottman's bell first catch of the day is close to a first down. And you're seeing the, the basis of the offense. They're an inside zone, they're an outside zone. They're an RPO and they're a quick game team. That's what they do. To have actually converted for P.J. two third and seven plus conversions in the drop back game is a huge bonus. Third and one here. Oh, P.J.'s fired up. Didn't like the spot perhaps? or the measurement. Maybe he wanted a measurement and was frustrated. I don't think the uh, field judge liked his the little shove in the back I would imagine. <laughs> before the time out. Minnesota, the on-field officials were buzzed for a replay on the previous play. The ruin on the play was the runner was short to the line of game. So they will take a look at this. The ball spotted currently right at the 30-yard line. They need the 29. We're going to take a break. We'll take a look on the other side. So they've been taking a look at this. They've spotted the ball at the 30. They needed the 29 for a first down, which it looks like he's got. Here's the call after the review. After further review, the ball will be placed for measurement to determine whether it's third down or a first down. Okay, let's see exactly where. The ball will re be relocated to the number 30 on the field. It's like Jerry Redder minds. Wait, to the 30 was where it was. Now I'm confused, Brock. 29. Okay. Uh, I think you meant the 29. All right. It was at the 30, going to move it to the 29, which I think is a pretty fair spot. Well, if you're curious about P.J. Flex energy <laughs> and whether or not he was going to bring it on the road, there's no question. That guy is wired and ready to go. And said they had a wonderful week of practice. There's a standard of practice that they play to and over the course of the entire season felt like there was only one practice all year and it wasn't this week. Well, it winds up being about a two yard turnaround on the review and so a first down for Minnesota. And P.J. Flex's first job as a coach was as a G.A. under Jim Trestle at Ohio State. And he said right away, Jim Trestle gave him the advice, you're going to have to be yourself as this career goes on and there's going to be a lot of people that like it. And a lot of people that don't, because quite frankly, PJ, you sure are unique, Jim <laughs> Trestle said. And that's one thing PJ Fleck has done. He stayed true to himself. He's gone from Western Michigan, turning that program around to Minnesota doing the same. Well, it's been a little bit different, though, on this opening drive. How about six of nine passes for a crew that's 65% of the time running the ball? That is second only to Boston College in all the Power Five schools and give some real credit to Tanner Morgan on this opening drive. Two third and seven plus conversions against just a salty, salty defense. Rodney Smith back in the game at running back on first down from the 29. Smith's got it. Not a lot of room inside. Brady Reef, fifth year senior, has been part of the rotation each of the last few years up front for the Hawkeyes makes the tackle. Yeah, two senior D tackles. If you're going to run it between these offensive tackles, you're going to have to run it at Lattimore and Reef and try to create some movement. And as I said earlier, having Welch back right behind those two, that triangle of senior leadership is so huge for this Hawkeye defense. It's a big game for pride for Iowa defensively, especially against the run after they gave up 300 rushing yards against Wisconsin, most they'd allowed in three years. Looking to get to the edge, Rodney Smith. Golston runs him down, and he's ripped down after a short gain. Geno Stone was there along with Golston. You know, it is you know, the 300 yard, sure, you expect that from Wisconsin. You expect huge days from Taylor. You just don't expect it against an Iowa defense. Got wore down. It didn't get ahead of the sticks like they're doing right now. But a team that plays so much better in front of these hometown fans here in Iowa. They've won eight in a row against the Gophers here at Kinnick. Back to 99. Third and nine. Now 
Morgan in trouble and sacked by Brady Reef. And finally, the Hawkeyes get a stop on third and long. And just a half sack coming into this game on the season for Reef. You see the nice little line stunt. The Hawkeyes love to run those stunts on third down. You see a little adjustment on that final third and nine. Unlike the two previous third and longs, a little bit more zone coverage behind. The windows close. Morgan goes down and not a surprise here. Looks like the Gophers are going to go for it. a lot of kicking issues. They're nine of 11 on fourth down this season. Most of those obviously fourth and short. They're going to call a timeout. We'll take the timeout with them. 5.49 to go first quarter. Back to Iowa City after this. Brock, you mentioned the kicker issue. The normal kicker, Michael Lance, who didn't play last week, didn't make the trip this week, continued leg tightness, so Brock Walker is available, as is Michael Tarba. But Tarba has attempted one extra point at Minnesota, that's all. Yeah, a big part of the reason why P.J. Fleck, it looked like, is going to go for it, and he will on 4th and 13. Well, actually, now I think, he, back? Yeah, I think he's changed his mind. That'll show us. Yeah, well, P.J. was down watching these guys the entirety of warm-ups. Told us this week he didn't know who we would go with based on warm-ups that Bruce and I were watching. It looks like yet another Brock. Brock Walker, who hit his lone attempt last week from 26 yards. This one's from 50. Bruce Feldman reports through a crosswind. And he hooks it. Yeah, a bit too tall of a mountain to climb for the redshirt freshman from South Dakota. And it stays 6 0. And just his second attempt on the entire season. Uh, once again, just worth watching in these games in November that so often come down to a possession. The snap a little bit high. The ball is down in plenty of time. And. And you can look at Brock Walker. He is a strong kid from South Dakota, but he's not been the experience and had the experience of facing Kirk Ferentz, these Iowa Hawkeyes. And I guarantee you for P.J. Fleck, he will note that and remember that for the decisions over the course of the next 50 minutes. Nate Stanley and the Hawkeyes, 75-yard touchdown drive to open things. And Goodson, the freshman, was a big part of that. Nice burst here on the first play of this drive. And now a game break. Sam Farber in Los Angeles, the Bright House financial game break. Georgia, one of the one loss teams ahead of Minnesota still. Minnesota, one of five remaining unbeatens, number eight in the college football playoff standings. Here's Goodson again, steps out of a tackle, crosses midfield inside the 40. And so far, Brock showing why they wanted to give him a bigger role. Yeah, he's just breaking those arm tackles, and he's got the speed and quickness. Iowa loves to run their outside stretch Jones zone. We'll do it with two backs, as you see Brady Ross there get the kick out block. And then this guy breaks that tackle. That's the one that they've just not had over the course of the season enough. And frankly, you've got to have in this system a difference maker at that position, the true freshman not looking like a true freshman anymore. They have 10 rushing touchdowns this year, Brock. Seven of them have come from inside the two-yard line. Just hardly any big playability at all from that spot. Until Goodson arrived. He's got five or six and for more on the freshman from Georgia. Here's Bruce. Joe talking to the coaches here. There is a lot of excitement about this kid. They got him out of Georgia. Wasn't a big. He was a three star guy They actually bailed off some other guys who were higher star star recruits because they felt they loved his burst. They said he's got a lot of juice in him when he gets going. And look I think this is a team that has not finished above 10th in the Big Ten in rushing which is kind of mind boggling for a Kirk Ferentz team. Kirk Ferentz told us hey we usually raid the Mac when Michigan tried to come in and raid him he stayed with us and we're thrilled he did. Makai Sargent replaces him Stanley quick trigger through the hands of Tracy. There's a flag down. I'll tell you who else is thrilled the Iowa faithful watching this first quarter who've been clamoring for this offense to open up a little bit who've been clamoring for the true freshman to get more bites at the apple. 
ineligible receiver downfield, number 42, was covered by another receiver. Five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, two tight ends on the line of scrimmage. Those receivers then have to get off the ball. That's the redshirt freshman in Tracy who makes the mistake pre-snap and then ultimately the drop post-snap. And a pretty big, and actually Minnesota takes those five yards. So makes it second and 10. Now offensively, Kirk Ferentz has said that this season has been a grind. A lot of that has been a lot of moving parts up front because of injuries. Just haven't been able to get things going consistently. Stanley looking to throw on second down. Finds an open window to the touchdown score. Nico Regani, redshirt freshman from Connecticut with a team high, kind of quietly, team high 39th reception. You just know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of zone coverage. And if Nate's able to do that and have that second little hop in the pocket with nobody around him, he loves those throws. Just watching him practice yesterday, maybe the deep touch is not his strength, but that intermediate throw, 15 to 20 yards where he can put it and throw it like a dart right on those guys. That is the senior strength. Big Ten second leading passer. More than 7,500 yards in his three years as a starter. Look like we're going to maybe have another review of the spot here. That one on Minnesota's last drive, almost the same exact yard line, too. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was that the runner was short to the line of game. And to keep up with the symmetry, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Replay, the call is going to stand. Ball spotted a yard short. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm Kirk Ferentz right now and he tells his offensive coordinator, Brian Ferentz, what he wants, I would say you got two downs to get this yard. Meaning, if you want to take a shot right now, third and one man coverage may be a great opportunity knowing you're going to go for it on fourth if you don't get it here. You want to be aggressive? Stay aggressive against the eighth ring team in America. A couple tight ends on the field along with the fullback, Brady Ross. They will sneak it, and Stanley gets it by plenty. They've averaged about five yards a pop on his quarterback sneaks throughout his career, and he got four there. I believe that's his 15th conversion along those lines. And look at the big fellas. I love that right there. Tristan Wirfs is a monster. I'll go down the field pregame, and there's a lot of guys that weigh 300 plus pounds and 320 pounds. There's not many put together the way he is. I mean, perfectly. Legs, upper body, power. He's going to have a decision to make here after this season because he's a really good one. Native of Mount Vernon, Iowa. NFL scouts really excited about him. Fresh set of downs from the 25. Hawkeyes on the move again. Got to snap it. They do. Here's Goodson. Into the arms of Sam Renner. Fifth year senior on the inside for Minnesota who came to Minnesota as a walk on started to get more and more playing time and now here he is. In his final season, getting talked about as an NFL prospect himself. And you know what those senior defensive linemen listen to? The quarterback's calls. And just a little heads up, when you hear an Omaha, not just Peyton Manning's Omaha, but you just heard one there from Nate, oftentimes something that starts with an O is opposite. You come up with different O terms to run it opposite of where you were initially going to run it, and those savvy seniors up front, they're listening. Only a three-man rush. Stanley with time. Long throw to the opposite sideline for Amir Smith-Marset. First down inside the 15. Showed off that strong arm there from the opposite hash mark. And that's thrown into Aiden coverage. Another time where you see Joe Rossi, the D coordinator of Minnesota, just playing soft, conservative, drop eight in the zone coverage. Trust that the speed and eyes are going to defeat the arm of Stanley and on two occasions that's not been the case. Stanley's hit four of his first six. First down inside the 15. Smith Marset in motion. They love him on the sweep. Stanley straight ahead leaning to the 10. Renner and Du Treadway combine in the tackle second and six. You know, I think a lot of conversation just about Minnesota emotionally. How do you come back and fill that tank. Right after you just spent it all, man, you ran it on fumes a week ago. I always judge that by defense. I judge it by those big guys up front. I judge it by how hard they're running and tackling. That, to me, is the greatest indicator of where you are as a football team emotionally. What are you seeing so far? I would say, okay. Okay. Inside of a minute left here in the first quarter. Yes. 
Heavy dose of Goodson in this first quarter. The freshman trying to get around the edge. Crashes his way in. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Ten yards. Goodson running with a purpose. Well, one of P.J. Flex stats that he looks at and says it's one of the biggest determinants of who wins and loses is missed tackles. And that's one, that's two, that's three, and then I will run through number four. You miss tackles on the road defensively, you're going to have a real hard time to win, especially against a battle-tested team like Iowa. This extra point is good, and it's 13-0 Hawkeyes. All oh, Iowa over the first quarter. They call him the human joystick. Use the joystick for a uh, truck stick here, running through St. Juice. Tyler Goodson already 75 yards on eight carries and a touchdown, and they go 68 yards on another touchdown drive for Iowa. And right now, Iowa doing the fundamental things right. And I think for Minnesota, I was texting with Coach Dungy, the Minnesota Gopher grad, and so proud, as so many of the alums are. And he talked about all the fundamentals that Minnesota's done right. Well, that wasn't good fundamental defense on that touchdown run. This ball's kicked momentarily. Wiley picks it up and has nowhere to go. There is a flag down. DJ Johnson, special teams tackle for Iowa. The Minnesota only averages four penalties a game. This is going to be the second on the Gophers already. During the return, holding, return team, number eight, half the distance from the end of the run, first down. Time now for More Than a House, sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Kinnick Stadium, which was known as Iowa Stadium to begin with, renamed for the Heisman winner, Niall Kinnick, in your first trip here. Quite an environment, quite oh. a Big Ten college football scene, isn't it? Sign me up for November Big Ten football with people on both sides that love it. I mean, have a passion for their school, so proud of it. As these Hawkeye faithful are, they know the role they can play in this thing tonight as well. They love it, and in this case, they hate each other. Morgan pumps short. He's got his eyes over the top. Haven one for Bateman. Underthrown. Comes back to catch it. As he's done so many times this year, Rashad Bateman provides a big play. And that's just a one on one with Jack Kerner, the safety. And that is a advantage Minnesota. Right? That is what everybody calls a 50 50 ball, a contested ball. And you trust the athleticism of your stud to go up and make a play that for Minnesota hopes to turn some of this momentum. End of the first quarter, when we come back, we'll take it through one of the great traditions in college football. But it started in 2017, the adjacent UI Stead Family Children's Hospital up on the 12th floor. Patients and their families wave down to the stadium. The game stops. And everybody turns their attention up there to the kids on the 12th floor. It is as special of a new tradition, obviously one of a kind, you're going to find in this great sport. And we look ahead to the second quarter. And a 13-0 game, largest deficit that eighth-ranked Minnesota has faced this season. Hit a big play to finish the first quarter. They start this second with a tough run from Rodney Smith. Geno Stone with a tackle. Here are the first quarter stats. You know, Minnesota has only trailed in Big Ten play a total, coming into this game, a total of 10 minutes all year. And this is the game that Kirk Ferentz wanted. Wanted to get up, wanted to see if P.J. Flex Gophers were able to play from behind, take them out of their strength. They've been able to dictate the kind of fight they've wanted all year, and it's been a fight won at the line of scrimmage. And now Minnesota's got to have the patience and the resolve to continue to run the football. Only run it for 11 yards so far. Here's Shannon Brooks. He gets a short gain. Jack Kerner helps Davion Nixon finish him off. Third and three. Yeah, they're just not creating movement between the guards. And I don't think that's because Curtis Dunlap is out, but that plays a role when you move around your offensive line in ways that you've not had to do this year. And credit those seniors in the middle for Iowa. They're stopping that inside run. And I promise you, P.J. Fleck is thinking about that because not many have this season.
Fake to Ibrahim. Morgan throws. Up to get it for a first down is Johnson. And so Minnesota three of four on third down so far. Yeah, and you hit on it earlier, just talking about the triumvirate here at receiver in the different skill sets. Johnson's usually the guy they like in the slot. But there, to me, is multiple advantages with all three of them in one-on-ones. You've seen it against the corners. You've seen it against the safeties. You've seen it against multiple coverages. And it speaks to just how efficient those three are and yet also big play makers. And that may be one of the biggest difference of the Gophers in 2019. Great track record for this staff. P.J. Fleck, Kirk Chiracca, the O coordinator, Matt Simon, the receivers coach, what they did with Corey Davis at Western Michigan. Here's Morgan finding Bateman again inside the 25, working against Matt Hankins. And just zone coverage, the underneath coverage, the linebacker gets out of the way. Hankins does what he's taught to do, and that's keep everything in front and then to go finish. But the big key there for Morgan was the amount of time in the pocket. If they can keep Epinesa and Golston and crew off of Tanner Morgan, he's going to throw for 300 plus yards tonight. Offensive line, PJ Fleck thinks, is the group that's grown the most in his three years as the head coach. Uh, literally and figuratively, I guess. You mentioned the size, 340 a pop. Morgan throwing short side. Yeah, and he's got another completion to one of his best friends, Demetrius Douglas. Second of the day for a guy who had just eight this season coming in. And I'll say it again, this is a crew that for every three plays runs it twice, but you're not seeing that right now. Because to me, this is where their advantage is. And when you're a 9-0 team striving to be 10-0 and doing things you haven't done in a century, you've got to be able to win in multiple ways. And Douglas does a nice job getting the foot in and once again efficient through the air. Shannon Brooks, nice job to fight off a block. And yeah, bring him down. AJ Epinesa with a tackle and it's third down. And that is a grown man. That was such a joy for us to sit and talk ball with, talk life with and football. Boy, he was fun to, to just meet and he's fun to watch on tape and use his hands there to win for Phil Parker and his defensive crew that's looking for answers on third down. First look at the Wildcat from Minnesota. They bring Seth Green in. They've been so efficient in this package. It's Green behind Ibrahim. First down and goal, Minnesota. Converted quarterback, moved to tight end, then receiver, and he's almost exclusively a Wildcat quarterback now. And it's a numbers advantage anytime you get into this formation. And Geno Stone, number nine, he's the lone defender that's unblocked. But when you've got six foot four and 240 pounds with a head start barreling down on you, advantage Gophers. And out on a goal to go situation where Minnesota's perfect this season. 19 out of 19 scoring touchdowns once they get it inside the 10. Play action on the slam, knocked down third time today. One of the defenders for the Hawkeyes has got his hand on it. For the second time, it's Chauncey Golston. That's exactly right. And this is just an awareness of formation and knowing, right, that, okay, this is a this is their RPO game. That I've got to have an awareness, especially if I'm blocked up, because the number one route behind that action is the slant. They run as many slants as anybody in college football to just kind of take advantage of that void as the linebackers come up to stop that run. Your hands as a D end also have to go up for the third big pass breakup. Tenth play of this drive for the Gophers. Second down goal. Toss it to Smith. Rodney Smith to the six with Welch making the tackle with Colbert. And again, the kicking situation, not a bright one for Minnesota. Really at this point, the lone weakness on paper for P.J. Flex team. Brock Walker and Michael Tarbutt the options. Michael Lance not making the trip. Trying to calm himself down, Brock Walker. Empty set on third and goal. 
Morgan in trouble. He got hit as he threw it. It's incomplete. A.J. Epinesa got there just in time to alter the throw, and it was over Johnson fourth down. And I think that's the only reason this ball sails out of the reach of Johnson here. You're going to see him once again feel that zone coverage, set it up. He gets to the space, but is that little contact from Epinesa, that little push that forces this throw from Tanner Morgan, this would have been his 22nd touchdown pass of the year, if not for the junior Epinesa. And so Brock Walker with another opportunity missed from 50 uh, Minnesota's first drive. This one a little more manageable. And he nailed it right through the middle. And so P.J. Flex team gets its first points of the day on the field goal for the Hawkeyes have the early 13-3 lead. Yeah, something they've not had against these ranked teams. Right against Michigan, it was uphill the entire way for Stanley and crew. They could just never get into any rhythm offensively. For P.J. Fleck, he's 5-0 and in one possession games this year. The Hawkeyes on the other side, just 2-3. and three. And in those three losses to ranked teams, they couldn't play this style of getting ahead and making teams, trying to make those ranked foes one-dimensional. So issues with the ranked teams this year, but historically, when you look at Iowa hosting ranked teams, been really good. Looking for their third top 10 home win in the last four seasons. Knocking off Ohio State, really destroying Ohio State a couple of years ago, beating number two Michigan before that. Here comes Amir Smith Marset. Yeah, and he gets stuck shy of the 30. I just wanted to be there for an example for all the kids in the hospital, for somebody to look up to, because I never had that when I was battling it. And I'll uh, finish this up in a second. All play. right, in front of this first down play, Bruce. Play action for Stanley. Wide open Tyrone Tracy to the 46, Bruce. Yeah, Joe, so he spoke at the Big Ten media luncheon this summer, and it was a really inspiring, powerful message. He has impacted so many people, not just around the state of Minnesota, where he visits to the Children's Hospital all the time. Even there was a nine-year-old boy here in Iowa whose family is full of Iowa, Iowa diehard fans. This kid was so moved by Casey. He has become a Gopher fan, came to the ho hotel last night and was so excited to meet him. And it's really remarkable the impact he's had on kids all over the country now. Here's Goodson tripped up by Antoine Winfield Jr. And special for everybody oh. that gets to be part of the experience. But you can only imagine how special it was for Casey O'Brien to return incredible. the wave to the Children's Hospital. Yeah, just incredible to use your platform. And no matter what that platform may be, but to just make the most of it. And that's incredible stuff, Casey. Only the third Hawkeye drive touchdowns on each of the first two. Here's second down and eight. Stanley steps into the pocket to the sideline. A strike for Tracy. Slips the defender and breaks free. All the way to the 25. A guy that they think has a big play knack has started to show up the last few weeks with Brandon Smith injured. Yeah, it's a true freshman running back. It's the redshirt freshman wide receiver. It is yet another bullet perfectly thrown. Nate Stanley is comfortable back in that pocket and put a couple more missed tackles here for Minnesota. Just something they've not done this season on this run to 9-0. They have secured that, that tackle, but Smith, the corner, can't. And Tyrone Tracy, 246 yards over the last two games, including that long touchdown in the final minutes. A couple catches here. Now they get it to him on the end around. He gets a block from Ross. He gets another first down for the Hawkeyes. He was a running back and a receiver in high school in Camby, Indiana. Indiana High School Player of the Year. Yeah, got some good juice. You're going to see from the top of the screen, set up well. He's in a tight formation. That should be an indicator for Minnesota. It is not, and once again, losing containment. That time, Sori Marin, the linebacker, just can't catch up with the speed and the explosion. And yes, I said it, the explosion by this Iowa offense. They've got a few pieces, don't they? I mean, looking at Tracy, we've talked about Goodson and both those guys, freshmen. First down and 10 from the 14. Stanley playing with a lot of confidence was under pressure still delivered a strike it is Tracy again to the five where he's thrown down by St. Juice let me remind you these are the same Hawkeyes that have scored 16 points a game the last five weeks in conference play and Stanley this time not a clean pocket but it doesn't matter the senior the three-year starter you can't throw it better 
He did not care one bit. Keontae Shad at 6'3", 300 pounds is bearing down on him. Perfect on this drive. Seven of nine on the day. Looking like big old Ben Roethlisberger in that Steeler looking right? uniform today. 6'4", 240, throwing rockets. The non-elastic sleeves. He's got the whole picture. Play action, deep drop, end zone, Smith Marset, touchdown Iowa. The Hawkeyes exploding out of the gates. Three drives and three touchdowns against the eighth ranked team. That's what everybody loves to do. And boy, this play and this plan is working perfectly. What do you want to do down in the red zone? You want to run those rub routes, right? You want traffic. You want this, this corner here, Coney Durr, to have to get through that congestion. He cannot. And I'll say it again for about the 10th time, you simply can't throw it better than that. The speed of the Hawkeyes right now in this offense is simply too fast for Minnesota on the back end in their secondary. And it's 20 to three, midway through the second quarter. P.J. Flex team unbeaten and first in the Big Ten West, essentially for those baseball fans out there, magic number of two to clinch the West. Any combination of two Minnesota wins or Wisconsin losses would clinch the division. But in a 20 to three hole, I mean, they've hardly trailed this season in a big hole here, 620 left to go first half. Morgan looks to throw, lofting one downfield. Tyler Johnson able to hang on. Absorb the hit from Jack Kerner for a gain of 36. And he's slow getting up. Got it first down at the Iowa 37. First carry today from Mo Ibrahim. Runs low to the 30. This is a guy who a year ago ran for more than 1,100 yards with Rodney Smith and Shannon Brooks both out much of the season with an injury. Only 340 this year for Ibrahim because those other guys have been healthy for the most part. Part of a very good running back group. But still six touchdowns. And I think like so many of these guys, whatever role that they're put into, and when you're winning, it makes buying into those roles so much easier as you see Johnson come back on the field. Seven yards on first down, second and three. Ibrahim again. Able yeah, to finish forward, looks like third and short. Yeah, what I don't think you're going to see a lot from Iowa, especially now as they have a lead, is going back to that single safety look. They've been hit a couple different times now with plays down the field. Tanner Morgan and this receiving crew, they're going to try to keep those safeties, I think both of them back, and trust that front seven as much as they possibly can. That's so much about what Phil Parker's defense always does is limit the big plays. Way back to the days when he took over for Norm Parker. Third down one to the Wildcat. Seth Green didn't get it this time. Geno Stone up from his safety spot, and it's fourth down. Well, you see the adjustment there. The first time they ran this, Geno was flat-footed. He said, not this time, man. Uh-uh. That is not what Phil Parker has taught any of us how to play Iowa Hawkeye defense in football. And when it is run and heavy run, you come downhill as number nine does and finishes. They keep green on the field for fourth down and one. And a timeout coming for P.J. Fleck. Fourth down and one, and P.J. Fleck in Minnesota keep the Wildcat package out there. He has not thrown a pass this season, in case you're wondering. Does have a touchdown pass against Iowa in his career. They're going to run it. Rodney Smith gets it easily, and then some inside the 15. But there is a flag down back at the 22. Seventeen yard gain, perhaps nullify. Holding offense, number eighty five, ten yard penalty from the spot of the infraction, fourth down. That's Bryce with them. Yeah, and if you're Bryce with them, the fourth year junior here, you've got to know. You, you have to let go that if the running back is coming down to you at this spot, you've got the conversion. You just have to let go. And at that point, he had the first down by five yards. Yep. And so instead of fourth and one, and instead of a first down conversion, it'll be fourth and five. 
And back to a traditional set here. Tanner Morgan will take the snap. Hawkeyes bring pressure. Morgan in trouble. Steps away. Runs for the first down. Doesn't run often, but enough there in terms of his running ability where he can do that and a huge fourth down conversion. He's such a gamer. A, a rare blitz here. The extra fifth defender comes. Dane Belton in right there. That's a play. Making Golston miss on fourth and five. Not to panic, to know exactly what you got to get. My Tanner's been one of the best and gets with them off the hook. So the drive kept alive. First down at the Iowa 25 yard line. Fake to Smith. Here comes pressure and a sack. Christian Welch firing his gun from his linebacker spot. Just perfectly timed here. Pressure from the senior. Watch him, he doesn't show it early, and I think that's what gets Tanner so often to the redshirt freshmen, the young players, they're itching to get home. The senior, he held those cards perfectly, times it appropriately, and then he doesn't let Morgan out of his grasp. Speaking of perfectly, how about a perfectly timed return for the senior from Wisconsin after missing the last three games with a stinger? Those linebackers put in such tough spots against this Minnesota offense. Only a four-man rush this time. And an open man, it's Bateman, and he dropped it. Third and long. Boy, that was an incredible throw. Anticipation and accuracy. This ball is out before Bateman ever comes out of his break. It surprises him. I think he drops it because it's right on him. You can't do it any better to beat zone coverage. And unfortunately, Bateman doesn't look it in before he looks at the closing safety. Rare drop for the Big Ten's leading receiver makes it third and 18. Morgan down the sideline. He's got one on one. Chris Altman Bell can't get it with a coverage from Riley Moss. Making his first start of the season today with O.J. Mudia out. And he was right there with Altman Bell, fourth and long. Yeah, you just can't live in third and 18s. Look at the bail coverage. Look at the eyes in the backfield the entire time. And then Moss does it right. He doesn't panic. He trusts his technique. He feels for that wide receiver. And then he goes up and knocks it away. Not bad for your first start of the season, but he likes playing Minnesota. Yeah. Two picks a year ago as the true freshman started six games. The Minnesota game was his first. So first start of his career came against the Gophers last year. First start of this season against the Gophers today. Punt team comes out. First punt of this game is a really good one from Michael Sleep Dalton, or beg your pardon, Jacob Herbers. Three drives and three touchdowns, but this one begins inside their own five as P.J. Fleck likes to play the field position game. 224 left to go. Makai Sargent. Let's check in with Bruce Feldman. Oh, Joe, after that last Iowa scoring drive, Kamal Martin, senior linebacker, came back and really lit into his team. He was like, you know what, let's play with some pride. As things settled down a little bit, we saw Antoine Winfield Jr., Carter Coughlin, gather around all these guys, said, look, just forget about just what happened. Let's keep playing. Try to really get these guys settled down, because right now it seemed like they are really on their heels from this Iowa Big play offense. Yeah, and balance attack, Bruce. And I would say just a step slow. I mean, this is a group for PJ and, and Rossi, the D coordinator, that have played faster than just about everybody over the course of the season, certainly the last six weeks, and not tonight. Sergeant again on the stretch play, nowhere to go. Got tripped up by the safety, Jordan Howden. Sam Renner was there as well, and it's third down. You know, for Minnesota, this is really uncharted territory in a couple ways. Number one, trailing it all. Number two, trailing by a bunch. Number three, we mentioned it off at the top, being the team with the target on. Yes, and I'll tell you what else, because you burned a couple timeouts here, and you've got just one left in your pocket. You have all three timeouts. You'd be taking them right now. But it is just the little details today. It is the holding calls. It's the drops. It's some of the break in, in coverage. It's the missed tackles. It is those things 
that Tanner Morgan and P.J. Flex, Minnesota Gophers, have just not done this season. And an awful lot of credit goes to the other guys on the other side that are out playing them. A little bit surprising he didn't use the final timeout right there to maximize what they'd have to open the ensuing drive if they're able to get off the field here. 30-second break. Back in a moment. It is a run, and it's Makai Sargent. Sargent close to the first down. Ultimately, Keontae Shad angled him out of bounds. And they'll be able to preserve that final timeout because of it. Well, the tackling hasn't come easy, and you even see it right there because of the pursuit and gang tackle. You're able to get Sargent down, but that has not been the case. Too many of these one-on-one -on -one situations have gone the way of the Hawkeyes, both in the run game, in the pass game, Nate Stanley avoiding that sack. The true freshman running through some of those arm tackles, and that's not good enough out on the road. I said to you earlier, Joe, that many times I evaluate the emotion of a team by the front. You also got to evaluate it by these tackles, where you have been secure this season, and that out has been that's not been the case the first 30 minutes. I'm telling you, handling prosperity for these young players today, I honestly think it's harder than adversity. How many coaches do we hear all the time that say players are so much more resilient than we are? Right? They're younger, they're more resilient, they can handle adversity. But just handling unprecedented success is so hard to do. And especially emotionally on defense, man, where your body's hurting. It's mid-November, late November, and you got to finish those tackles. That, to me, has really shown up in this first half. First Iowa punt. They did have to use the final timeout. It's a line drive taken by Douglas. Demetrius Douglas unable to squeak through. Take it to the 46. So apparently they ruled him down in bounds. Yeah, you saw the side judge rule that and wind here. Wow. It looks to me like he drives him out of bounds, doesn't it? He's going to just make a judgment call there that the momentum had stopped. And thus winding the clock and P.J. having to use the timeout. Final one, 39 seconds. No timeouts and no experience at kicker. And I'm going to guess these two safeties back here are going to try to keep everything in front of them. Deeper than the deepest. A Minnesota team number two in the conference, scoring 40 points per game in conference play, held to three so far. Morgan finds Douglas. What a dime. Third catch of the day for Douglas. This one goes for a gain of 28. And, and Iowa actually goes to that single safety look right here. And this, you just can't throw it better than that while getting hit in the back. Drops it in the zones perfectly. From the 17, looks to throw again. Tyler Johnson spinning to the outside. He's inside the 10 with 20 seconds. And they do give him enough, and so the clock stops. It's first and goal just like that. And they'll spike it here. Wow. Phil Parker beside himself. Yeah, he's disappointed because the whole premise of what they do, and they're second in the country when it comes to not allowing plays of 10-plus yards. Second in the entire country, just 79 plays on the entire season of 10-plus yards. And that first down pass into that zone coverage attacks the very essence of this defense. Second and goal, 15 seconds. Again, no timeouts for the Gophers. Morgan, well protected. Great coverage, so he's got to heave it out of bounds. And it's third and goal with nine seconds. That Cedric is. Lattimore ultimately pursued him out of the pocket. Sorry, Joe, that is so huge from Tanner. Where he takes sack, the half's over. And to have the awareness right there to know that clock, both that quarterback clock in the pocket and, more importantly, that clock right here, Knows you could not take a sack. Morgan. Incomplete. Nowhere close to Johnson, but a flag on Riley Moss. 
And that's obvious, and that's a hold. And you know what? That's not a terrible call with nine seconds left. Yeah, and it's it's not a slam dunk as far as a play call here either. Nope. What you're going to do. Yeah, Riley Moss has hand contact. He's grabbing the jersey. There is no question that's a penalty on the sophomore corner. Pass interference. Defense. Number 33. Foul that occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic. First down. So are you running a play here? <laughs> or are you taking points? Or are you running a really quick play and hoping you have both options? Yeah. I, if that's your thought, thinking you're going to get another one, I would flush that. Yeah. Four seconds. Probably not enough. More than one play. I was going to take a timeout. A field goal would bring them to within two touchdowns. They'll get the ball to open the second half. Yeah, I don't know what the hometown faith for Boone. That was a pretty obvious holding pass interference call in the end zone. So a couple factors here, right, come into play. Minnesota's kicking game is a problem. P.J. Fleck has watched this first half, and he knows that Iowa's speed offensively is getting the better of his go for defense and more than likely knows that a field goal right now, now you do get the ball to begin. Iowa took the ball, took it right down the field, so you do get the ball to begin the second half. You score a touchdown, you set the tone for your team and your messaging at halftime. You know, every week teams come into the game with a two-point play. Maybe this is the spot that you use it with a ball right in the two. Yep. You know, and I said to you week one, way back when, you remember that? South Dakota State on that Thursday night to open the season. I said, this is what row the boat guy gets paid millions and millions of dollars for these kinds of decisions where he's not just taking in one side of the game. He is looking at it in its totality. And he's going to bring the special teams out. Hmm. And he's going to say, nope, over the final 30 minutes, I'm going to trust my guys on defense to button it up. If they didn't get the ball to begin the second half, I don't think he makes yeah, this Yeah, different story. Yep. The freshman kicker is handling the kicking duties with another freshman kicker, Michael Lance, out for the second week in a row with an injury. Attempts this one from 20. Out of the hole to the punter, Jacob Herberts. He hit it off of the upright and through. That close to being a disaster at the end of the half for Fleck and the Gophers, but instead they're within two touchdowns. Yeah, if there's going to be choices later in the game, any in between, go for it or field goal, I think you may see in the second half a few oh. decisions to go for it. So the Gophers 9 and 0 for the first time since 1904. They had hardly trailed in Big Ten play this season. They trailed this entire first half. Well, tonight, PJ Flex Gophers, two field goals they settled for while Iowa on the other side finished. A big reason why they're up 20 to 6 right now. Minnesota will have it to begin this second half. Cam Wiley bringing it back from inside the five, and Wiley with room. Tripped up by the kicker, Shudak. They save a much bigger return. And so they'll begin at the 34 as we go down to Bruce. Joe, Brock just hit it right on the head. When I talked to P.J. Fleck a minute ago, he goes, listen, that was as bad a half of football as we played in a long time. We got to tackle better. We got to swarm to the football. And he goes, we got to turn these field goals into touchdowns, and we're going to do it. Yeah, they had been 19 for 19. Converting trips inside the 10 into touchdowns, but like you both mentioned settled for those two field goal attempts part of that was Clock ran out at the end of the first half, but still searching for their first touchdown of the day Tanner Morgan Looks to throw on the first play of the second half as all day for somebody to come free and it's Rashad Bateman for a gain of seven on his third catch yeah, and when Tanner has had the opportunity to have protection He's been as good as anybody we've seen this year I was telling you that at halftime, and we've seen Justin Herbert. We've seen Jacob Easton. We've seen some of the top-notch guys. Tanner had three balls knocked down, three of those seven incompletions. He had a couple drops, and he was dropping some dimes into tight zone coverage. And when protected, this kid can throw it. Top five in the country in passing efficiency. Hands it off here, and Rodney Smith finds a hole, breaks a tackle, lowers the shoulder, and runs to the 40. The sixth year senior they call great grandpa gets 19 yards and a first down. And you know what you saw zero of in the first half of this? 
yards between the tackles. Less than 40 yards rushing in that first half for the Gophers. I think there was a conversation at halftime between head coach, that offensive line, this run game, and saying, listen, we're not going to panic. That's why you settled for three at the end of the first half. We're going to continue to do what we've done all season long. And for the first time tonight, gashing the Hawkeyes between the tackles. Smith passes Lawrence Maroney for second in program history on the longest run of the day for the Gophers. This one gets shut down by Christian Welch. That's tackle number six for Welch, whose return to the lineup has been an important one. It's so fun watching senior linebackers. Watch the patience of 34, right? He feels it, he feels it, and then the minute he sees it, he pulls the trigger. Perfect angle, textbook tackle, a sack and tackle for loss he had in the first half as well. Second leading tackler for the Hawkeyes, even though he's missed the last three games. First drive of the second half for Minnesota. Second down 11. Smith steps up, or Morgan steps up and finds Bateman. That's another first down to the 30. Can't do it better. You feel a little bit of that rush. This is all the work that Tanner does in the offseason. A nice inside move by Lattimore. No flinching from Tanner. Eyes down the field. And really like he did the entire first half. Just a perfect throw. A catch and run ball to Bateman. As accurate as anybody you're going to find. On the move. Found Bateman. Second completion of the drive to him. And from the 31st and 10. Back to the ground, Rodney Smith behind Fon Lele gets upended by Hankins. That's a good tackle. And most of those corners, you do your job as, a, as an offense many times, go block the safeties, and you force the corners to go make a tackle because typically those guys would rather cover than finish containment. But Hankins brings down the six-year senior Smith. Had a team high eight tackles in the loss at Wisconsin last week at his first career interception. Makes the tackle there, and it's second and seven. Morgan looking down the seam. Johnson's broken loose for the touchdown. Minnesota finally finds the end zone with a 28-yard strike to the senior. Just can't do it any better. Uh what did P.J. say to Bruce? We're going to go down, we're going to score, and you're going to see a perfect route here. But watch the RPO in the bind it puts the safety in. He comes up, gets flat-footed, and he's gone. There's a saying in football, if you're even, you're leaving. And that is not Iowa Hawkeyes defense, right? It is their job. And that time, Kerner on the back end, he's that single safety, but he comes up, he bites. And what an efficient drive by Minnesota. And Tyler Johnson's fifth catch of the day gives him his ninth touchdown of the season. Minnesota finds the end zone with a 28-yard reception for Tyler Johnson. So much about the timing of that, too. I'm, I'm looking at a few different replays of it and just watching how he times up. Like, he's going to go block the safety, and you'd expect it from P.J. Flex receiving crew. I mean, he's developed some guys. It's why Bateman's here. His track record of getting the most out of receivers. But Tyler did such an awesome job in that run action of looking like he was going to go block the safety, and then he disappeared. That's a pretty good response, by the way. You're down 20-3 to three in this building. You drive it down. You get that field goal before half. You come out. You set the tone. Those points before half and those points after half are so critical. Briars see to kick it. And Smith-Marset has it creep over his shoulder into the end zone. I would have begun at the 25-yard line. To this 9-0 start, we've mentioned it many times, first time since 1904. Oh, Henry L. Williams was the head coach of the Gophers, outscoring opponents that year 725-12. That included a couple of high school teams. That included another Iowa opponent oh. in Grinnell College, largest margin of victory in Minnesota history. Nah, Grinnell's game plan was awful. It was they? not good. No. Yeah, Twitter was on fire. No answers. One and every coordinator <laughs> gone. P.J. Fleck has him at 9-0 again, one of the five unbeatens left in college football. Iowa's first drive of the second half begins with Tyler Goodson, who doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Winston De Lada, Badir, and Kamal Martin. 
Yeah, but about three different Gophers all defeated their blocks. Again, something you just didn't necessarily see in that first half. Treadway, Renner, all of those guys getting off of their blocks. And you can see it. You can sense it. They know. They know the opportunity at hand. There was no flinching when they were down 17. Iowa led by Nate Stanley. Touchdowns on each of its first three drives. The one drive where they had to punt was that final drive of the half. Backed up inside their own five to begin it. Minnesota brings pressure. Stanley gets rid of it incomplete behind Tyrone Tracy. It was Thomas Barber that came flying through. Yeah, that is the first what we call cover zero. No safeties, bringing six. So it's man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Enough of this Nate Stanley guy being comfortable in the pocket, picking us apart. Make the adjustment. Barber comes unblocked, forces the air and throw, and something Iowa didn't live in in that first half. And that is third and 10 plus. On third and 12, Stanley delivers right at the six or to depend on the spot as the freshman tight end Sam Laporta gets his first catch. They give him enough first down Iowa. That is a big time throw. So after bringing the house, now you're going to show it and drop back in the zone. Seven in coverage. And it's a tight window. I mean, that's three on two on that side. And we looked at a bunch of spots in that first half. Can't throw it any better than that. Looks like Laporta catches it right on the line. Good throw, good route by the true freshman tight end. They're really excited about tight end U. 11 players drafted from the tight end position in the 20 years under Kirk Ferentz. Play action. Stanley, confident strike. He's got Tracy working against Coney Durr. Yeah, I think you're seeing tonight, and I think you're going to continue to see it. Just opportunities on the perimeter with receivers and tight ends that can win their one on one coverage. That's an awesome job sticking that <laughs> ball away from the defender as well. Fighting through contact. Brian Ferentz was really excited about his young Hawkeyes. Has felt their growth over the course of the season and they're putting their best tape together tonight. And to the eye on second and short with a fullback Brady Ross. Ahead of Tyler Goodson. Goodson's got it behind a block from Ross. He's got a first down into Minnesota territory to the 45. 11 more for Tyler Goodson. That is now the fourth run of the Hawkeyes for Goodson in particular of 10 plus yards. The Gophers had zero of those in the first half. And that once again is just running through that contact. 86 yards, career high 97 earlier this season. They grow running backs down in Georgia. Man, oh man. Hawkeyes able to pry him out of Georgia. Takes the fake here. Deep drop to let the routes develop. That one's broken up by St. Juice. Stanley put it right on Tracy, who can, couldn't hang on. Call that Fox 2 X dagger, that 15 yard in cut here. Tracy stays down the line, does everything right, just does not secure it in St. Juiced for one of the rare occasions tonight of defenders really on either side being able to rip that ball out. What was that? X2? Fox 2 X dagger. Okay. Got it? I got it. On two, said Hut. No. Oh. Timeout. Coach. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 45. Quickly this time to Regani. Incomplete. Incomplete. Coverage from St. Juice again. They have gone right at the Michigan transfer St. Juice right from the first play today. Now this is a big call right now though. At third and ten here. And if you're Minnesota, are you going to sit back into some zone coverage? This was a run play. Stanley just picks it up and fires it out there thinking he has a one on one. And yep, I think that's clearly incomplete. But I'm going to be surprised if Joe Rossi, D coordinator, just sits back in that soft zone like he did in the first half. I think you've got to continue to force the issue on the senior quarterback. Well, they're showing pressure and they bring it. On third down, they get home. Sacking Stanley back at the 44. Boye Mafe, along with Kamal Martin. 
That's just a perfect stunt. You show five, you actually drop your nose, tackle out, and there's two of your speediest defenders. On a perfectly timed stunt, both get home. And I think Minnesota was tired of watching the comfort level of Stanley in that pocket. What a big sack. Michael Sleep Dalton with a line drive punt and a fair catch coming from Demetrius Douglas. Tanner Morgan and the Gophers back on offense. Here's Bruce. Guys, lots of people saw Dak Prescott this week doing this kind of hip thing in warm-ups. Well, Tanner Morgan's actually been doing that since January. He does it before every game as well. It's work he's done with a Canadian biomechanics specialist named Rob Williams. It's really to incorporate his lower body and get let his hips really take his throws. And we'll finish this in a second. Looking to use those hips. Launching one into double coverage. Incomplete. Should have been intercepted by Jack Kerner. Well, before we talk more about Tanner Morgan's hips, Bruce, this close, Brock, for yeah, an interception. Yeah, this was the first poor decision of the night by Tanner. He's wanting to be aggressive. Once again, a little bit of play action here in the deep shot. But he throws it right into the teeth of the defense, and it doesn't get much easier than that. But Kerner just can't bring it in. Second down, 10. Only thrown four interceptions on the season, 22 touchdowns. Got a gaping hole here. And a first down for Shannon Brooks as we go back to Bruce. All right, Joe, to finish up this thing, the hip deal is basically is what Rob Williams calls hip snaps. And it's something that they, he told me really to build what he calls spiral fling tension. In layman's terms, it initiates a rotary sequence from the hips because he said everything has to start with the hips. As for Dak Prescott, Drew Brees, a bunch of NFL quarterbacks have been doing something similar with Tom House. He's really the godfather of sports biomechanics in this country, what he calls snap and torque, similar principles. Though. Back to Brooks here. Back to back carries for the redshirt seniors. Stopped by Davion Nixon. Bruce, I like your layman's terms best. Hip thing. He just kind of <laughs> does this hip thing <laughs> to get everything uh, in sequence. But back in the day, it was all about your arm. I right. Just get your elbow up, right? You were quarterback and the footwork and then the arm. Yes. Not a whole lot in between. What about the biomechanics? But it sure is today. Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, all of these guys and so many quarterback trainers. And you see the benefits and the dividends it's paid. That work, this kid has been awesome this season. Throwing short side here in the quick game. It's going to be a little bit short as Hankin stops Altman Bell. I mean, Tanner Morgan a year ago was solid, right? Took over the starting job midway through, went four and two. But he wasn't this guy. He wasn't top five in the country in several passing categories. He said that work that he did with a biomechanics expert and work that he's done with Kirk Sharaka and his own staff has transformed him as a thrower. Looking at third and one here. And lots of communication here, making sure everybody's on the same page. There's the slant to Ottman Bell. Hankins tried to rip it out of there, but couldn't. And the play fake drew the backers up to buy the room. And you just see the suddenness. If you're going to run these play action passes, watch the feet, watch the hips. Look at the suddenness is that ball is ripped in a hurry. But once again, right on the chest, just a perfectly thrown ball. You see Johnson extend those hands. Good coverage, but you're not going to be a per beat a perfectly timed route and a receiver going out and snatching it with his hands. Ibrahim. Nothing developed. It was strung out and shut down. Jimon Colbert in there along with Cedric Lattimore. Really pick a Hawkeye on that play. And just remember that dropped interception as well. Just from just where this game is going, the back and forth, we knew it'd be two heavyweights that would sit in this beautiful cathedral and be and throwing haymakers and swings. And it was Iowa early, and then it's Minnesota, and there was a chance for Jack Kerner on a ball thrown into double coverage. Not many mistakes, just four picks, as he said, on the year. That was a costly drop. Minnesota taking advantage. And an Iowa defense that's been the best in the country at getting interceptions the last two years, but this year still looking to get that category going. On second and long, Morgan looking to throw underneath. Rodney Smith quickly shut down by the true freshman, Dane Belton. Third and six. Oh, similar situation, similar area of the field. 
You saw Rossi, the D coordinator for Minnesota, ramp it up. Tired of, of watching a quarterback get comfortable. Not necessarily what Phil Parker and crew love to do, but there will be some disguise. Whatever picture they show early to Tanner Morgan, I promise you will look a little differently post snap. One to snap it. They're going to need to burn a timeout. And they do. This is 20 to 3 Iowa, but Minnesota with the last two scores and with a big third and six coming here. I think what you love if you're PJ Fleck is your quarterback's red hot. You got three different receivers you feel good about, I think, in any of those matchups. To me, this is all about making sure you get enough protection to let Tanner do his job. They spread it out. Hawkeyes show pressure. Man to man across the board as Morgan goes back to throw. Wants one on one. Tyler Johnson climbs the ladder and comes down with it. Tyler Johnson having a heck of a day. 29 yards to convert third down. It's that inside fade route. They love running it. And once again, that is senior on true freshman. He wins from the jump. The minute you get that separation on a fade route, you give Tanner Morgan so much opportunity to put air on that ball. And the senior having quite a night. Sixth catch for Johnson, 129 yards. And Leave is one of the all time leading receivers at Minnesota. Nothing doing for Smith this time. Brady Reef has played a good game inside for Iowa. This too is where Minnesota is different. And why are they 9 0 for the first time in 115 years? Because there's not many gopher teams that have a quarterback that can play at the level Tanner has. Fourth most efficient in the country coming in, and not just one weapon. They've had, they've had excellent guys, NFL guys, but to have three different receivers that at any time you feel great in one-on-one -on -one situations, that's unique. Offensive coordinator Kirk Chirac has said the big thing early on was just instilling confidence in a guy that is really hard on himself. He's a perfectionist. Gathered that confidence with a 3-0 start through non-conference play, and they have rode it. Here in the Big Ten schedule. That's hit from behind by Epinesa. Thankfully for the Gophers, somebody's home to fall on it. Shannon Brooks. Epinesa puts his stamp in the game again. Man, he is so good. Just watch him beat Schluter. And then he's got to go through the running back. And then he's got to feel right where that ball is. Did it a week ago at Wisconsin. He's done it year after year. Maybe the sack numbers aren't where they were a year ago, but his impact is just as great. One of the most highly touted recruits they've ever had here. Third down 15. Can Morgan and the Gophers convert another? He's well protected. He delivers, but it's short as Johnson gets into the 14 and promptly dropped by Geno Stone. So the kicking situation being what it is for the Gophers and fourth down and four here. P.J. Fleck thinking about it. Well, he's going to go. I don't see the kicker out. You've already burned one timeout, too, in a one possession game. I think this decision was made at halftime. That if you get in any of these spots once again in the second half, you are going to be aggressive and trust the people and your quarterback on the field. Gophers 10 of 12 on fourth down this year. Morgan on the slant. Johnson drops it. Now flags fly. Flags come flying from all over the place at the end of the play. Are they going to get Dane Belton for a hit on Johnson after he drops it? Well, there were multiple flags that came in after the drop. And I think that's the conversation here. You saw P.J. Fleck run on the field to try to defend his player. It was a drop. 
It was a true freshman once again that takes a shot after that drop, and I think that's what all this conversation is right here. And this is a veteran crew. You don't bring one guy in. Jerry knows the impact of this play in this moment right now as he's getting the feedback from everybody. Add to the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Iowa. Number four. That's his first of the game. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct on Minnesota. Their head coach. His first of the game. It'll be first and ten for Iowa. So the Hawkeyes with the offsetting penalties get it. Well, a couple things to sort out here, and Mike Pereira is going to help us do that after this next play. First of all, both penalties are assessed. One of them is half the distance to the goal on Iowa. The other one on P.J. Fleck fully enforced, moving the ball to the 22. That's where Iowa begins this drive with a seven-point lead and a minute 16 left third quarter. On the bootleg, Stanley in the flats, finds Tracy, pulled down quickly by Benjamin St. Juice. Hello, Mike Pereira. Hello, Joe Davis and Brock. Here's the situation on that penalty. Normally, two ball, dead ball fouls will offset if you don't have clear uh, occurrence as to which one happened first. Here you did, so you get this hit that happens first, and so now later on you're going to get P.J. Fleck who runs out on the field, and now he's going to get penalized from that. So since you can determine the order of occurrence, then you penalize them both, the first, of course, going half the distance, and the second one taking the ball out to the 22. All right, Mike Stanley on time and on target. Smith Marset first down to the 43. We can talk about the hips of Tanner Morgan. Let's talk about the rocket arm here of Nate Stanley. This is as difficult a throw as you're going to make. That is one hash on a deep out route in the tight coverage where you get one spot. That's called a big boy throw. When this team needed it, you couldn't put it in a better spot. St. Juice made some plays on the previous drive. Knocked down a couple balls. Not that time against Smith Marset. One other thing worth mentioning, because the penalty on Dane Belton came after the drop, after the fourth down play, even if P.J. Fleck hadn't been penalized, Correct. it would have been Iowa football. Well, Iowa raced out to a 20-3 lead, but Minnesota with each of the last two scores in a 20-13 game as we go to the fourth. Joe Davis, Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman, first and 10 for the Hawkeyes at their own 42. Fourth quarter begins with play action. Stanley steps up. Fires a bullet, first down. Tyrone Tracy inside the 45 and a gain of 17. Man, does he throw the ball hard, huh? I mean, once again, ideal play action. He's able to step up in the pocket and then right by the arm of Sori Marin, the linebacker. There is nothing the country's best safety as far as coverage goes and nothing he can do when you throw with that timing and velocity and precision. We've talked about how precise Morgan has been. This has been some performance from Stanley. Really the two deep incompletions to Smith Marset on the first drive aside. Here comes a trick play. It's Amir Smith Marset. Minnesota stays home and shuts it down. Credit to the three year starter and the two time all Big Ten defensive end Carter Coughlin for staying home and then Sam Renner as well. Sam Renner finishing him off. Does it surprise you? A couple seniors? Doesn't surprise me. One of the game's big moments there. I love the call, trying to think those guys are going to be over aggressive. And yeah, Floyd's watched some good football through the year. That was a good play by a couple seniors. 1935, first year they started playing for Floyd of Rosedale, product of a bet between the two states' governors. On second and 11, Stanley wants one on one. Diving try! Amir Smith Marset made the catch. Superman dive for 22. Wow. Well, it was uh, fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Officials time, injured player, offense, number six. And I think Smith Marset knows <laughs> not only that knocked the air out of me as it landed on the tip of the football, that ball was on the ground. 
They just showed it on the video the board here. The play is under and, further uh, review. The ruling on the field was a reception for a first down. Minnesota players got excited about that. And they called the Iowa folks in the crowd said, turn it off. Change the channel on the video board. Stop showing them. Yeah, the ball can hit the ground, but you can't lose control of it and possession. And what an effort. Superman was right. Smith Marset has got some kind of burst. Look out for these Hawkeyes. Yeah. And these weapons over the years to come. Smith Marset's a junior, so he's a little bit more veteran. But you've seen Tracy, we've seen Rick true Haney. freshman back Goodson. Yep. And they're going to be some playmakers for the next quarterback to throw to over the years. So this is going to be overturned, and it's going to be third and eleven for Iowa. The Hawkeyes, three losses this season by combined 14 points. All those losses to ranked teams. They find themselves in another close game, not just this season, but throughout the entire Kirk Ferentz era, 21 years now. Like more often than not, they're playing in games like this. Yeah, and there's so many one-possession games. 41% of his games in his career over 21 years have been one-possession games. And, you know, I think a lot of the folks around here have wanted more explosion, just evolve. After further review, it's an incomplete pass. It will be third down at the 42-yard line. Clock operator, please put 13, 13.32. But his, 1, 3, 38, 13.38 on the game clock. Thank that, you. That style of ball, right, of taking care of the ball, of running the ball, playing elite defense, gets you and puts you in so many positions to win. It's taking you to Rose Bowls. It's putting you on unbelievable runs. And I think the more he trusts, and Brian Ferentz, his coordinator, trusts these young players, you'll see him open it up. We certainly have today, especially compared to the first three quarters in Wisconsin. This going to be pressure here. I think if you're Minnesota, you are not going to sit back in zone and let Nate Stanley pick you apart. You've seen a different mindset in the second half, and I think they continue to try to force the issue. Been able to get to him once today. Brandon Smith is in the game for Iowa to the near side of the screen. He's not played in three games. Stanley and pressured and sacked. It's Braylon Oliver, the freshman linebacker, all the way back in Iowa territory. You just can feel it here in the second half. There's no longer sitting on your heels. It is pushing it. It's some creative stunts. It's not all cover zero and outrageous pressures. That's just a five man pressure. But that's the true freshman who's asked to pick up the blitzing speedy Oliver. And credit the Gophers for yet another win defensively here in the second half. A loss of 16. Douglas with a fair catch at the 22 yard line. And so at 12.54 to go, the Gophers have it. Down by a touchdown. Minnesota down by a touchdown. The eighth ranked Gophers back on offense at their own 23. Run, RPO, takes some shots, nearly 300 yards on the night for Tanner Morgan. Make you feel really good about what you've done the last two quarters offensively. It is RPO. Morgan down the seam, into coverage, incomplete. Geno Stone and Riley Moss with the ball thrown into double coverage. Morgan lucky to see a second and 10. Yeah, and this was a little bit of a misread here. You're going to see the in route come underneath this post. If Tanner gives it a beat, look at that in cut. He has Bateman on an in cut. If he holds it for just a tick longer, he wants to take the shot on the corner. That's a couple times Tanner's thrown into coverage, into the fire. And a couple times, Iowa's been unable to take advantage of it. Back to the ground. Rodney Smith crunched in the hole. He gets just one, and it's Christian Welch again sticking his nose in. Along with Brady Reef, a couple of guys who've had their names called many times. Third and nine for the Gophers. Timeout, Iowa. 
Both teams two timeouts left with 12.05 left to go. Minnesota unbeaten with a two game lead over Wisconsin with a few to play but trailing here they've trailed the entire way and look at a third and nine with 12.05 left. It's been Johnson. It's been Bateman. But it again starts with protection. You better block Epinesa and Golston if you're going to get it started. Morgan crunched at the 21. Epinesa along with Evans but credit to the secondary for not giving him any windows. It was pretty good protection early on Joe but that zone coverage behind there was no outlet and then just watch Epinesa work on your left side just never gives up never gives up continues to pursue and finishes. Not always the clean sacks you win right away. It's sometimes those secondary pursuit sacks. Fair catch coming. And in a phone booth taken, but a flag. Max Cooper able to catch it. But fair catch interference coming here on Minnesota. It looked like Benjamin St. Juice, the starting corner, right up in Cooper's personal space. Kick catching interference on the kicking team, number 25. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Now to move the ball all the way inside the Minnesota 40. I mean, he's trying, but it ultimately is your responsibility to just get out of that area, that one-yard area. St. Juice was trying to do so, but got too close. And yet again, another critical mistake that you've just not seen from Minnesota over the course of the season hurting themselves. You know whose name we've not called in quite a while? The young freshman running back. Be Tyler Goodson bearing down on 100 yards total here in his first career start. He's got it here. Looking for the corner. Close to a first down as he's chopped down by Winfield Jr. Remember Brian Ferrant saying to us yesterday there's times that he'll kind of just look in between possessions at the at the stat sheet or the touch you know just the touches and he's a big believer and you got to get your best players their touches and they've been too long since their most dynamic offensive player certainly running back and space like that committed early like Bruce told us earlier stuck with his commitment despite a late push from Michigan and from Penn State and his in state school Georgia stuck with it though Kirk Ferentz said he learned a lot about him knowing that he was loyal got it again but dropped in the backfield for a loss of two by Kamal Martin and it's third down. That was an awesome play. You know Bruce reported earlier that it was Martin one of those seniors and they have seven seniors in their front seven when you throw in the nickelback Williamson. It was Martin that was vocal on the sidelines and when you set the tone vocally you got to then demonstrate it physically he pulls the trigger beats the block and gets the tackle for loss. Now the season long for Keith Duncan the kicker is forty nine. Right at the edge of that range right here. Heavy set on third and short. They motion Goodson out, leaving just the fullback Ross in there with Stanley. A straight drop. He retreats, keeping the play alive. Chased by Coughlin. He runs, cuts, first down Iowa. Couldn't quite break the plane for the game time two point conversion last week. Here he finds a way to where he was looking for. It's amazing, Joe. That is exactly the thought bubble that I <laughs> had in my head. That the thousands sitting here watching this were going, man, if he could have made those two guys miss just like that a week ago and run through that contact, that game goes to overtime in Madison. But I think they'll take this one too. Into the game comes Makai Sargent. Behind Ross, met in the hole by Thomas Barber. Able to finish forward to get a few. You could hear the plastic, right? You just know it here in the final eight minutes. Gonna be back to just your Big Ten downhill football if you're Iowa. That was the senior, Ross, and one heck of a collision with these linebackers. And yes, you want your sevens, but I think you've also got to. Continue now to manage that play clock as well. Have to be in no hurry here. No turnovers in this game. Minnesota will be digging at that ball, trying to cause one. 
Inside nine minutes. On second down, fake to Sargent. Stanley gets rid of it, almost picked by Durr. For the incompletion, third and six at the 19-yard line. Seeing Minnesota bring some more pressure as this game has gone on and to great effect. Get in a couple of sacks of Stanley. Man to man. And they rush just four. So Stanley's got time. Right to the stick, Smith Marset, they convert. You know what's really good? When the backup corner comes in, go after him. Man to man, press man, one on one coverage, and Keandre Thomas, the corner there, has played a ton of football. But you want to go after that guy who's been sitting and watching a little bit more. And I love the reaction there of Smith Marset. That's what the coaching staff talked to us about yesterday. He's got some of the extra juice and yet another critical third down conversion. Now one week after they went one for nine on third down, five for nine today. Stanley incomplete over Tracy's head with a coverage from Jordan Howden. Second and ten. Yeah, that was that was pretty funky right there. You had receivers blocking. It looked like that was maybe an RPO situation where those receivers were expecting a run play. No one really open and Stanley fires it into the first row. But this is the other area that's been different tonight. Minnesota 0 for 3 in the red zone. Kind of like the Nittany Lions were a week ago. The Hawkeyes on the other side of that being able throughout this game, early in this game, to finish these drives into touchdowns. It's Stanley. Third and eight. Mike could do Treadway. In there with a tackle along with Kamal Martin. And this is where if you're Nate Stanley and the senior, you've got to be so careful with the football. In the back of your mind right now, no matter what play just got singled into you, you've got to know you've got one of the country's best kickers that can make this a two possession game and to guard that football as much as anything else. Facing a secondary, Brock, 14 interceptions this season. That's second in the country. It was a big part of the reason they beat Penn State, intercepting Sean Clifford three times. No takeaways today. Third down and seven for the Hawkeyes. Stanley scanning the field, lets it go. End zone incomplete. Coverage from Coney Durr back in the game defending Tyrone Tracy and it's fourth down. Well, he put that in the one spot, the only spot where his guy may get it, but no gopher was going to. And I think even if Tracy came, I was going to be awfully close with that left foot. <laughs> this ball had some RPMs to it. Man, does he have a strong arm. And so they bring the kicking team on with Keith Duncan. He's hit 22 field goals this season. That's a program record. This one tails its way through and gives Iowa a two score lead with 713 left. Said you be careful with the football. If Stanley throws it right now, this is the route. It's designed to beat the safety right here. And if he throws it right now, guess what happens? It goes the other way. He doesn't. Instead, he throws it outside, throws it away. He can feel Sergeant fall down. It was that close. And Howden had the big pick to end the game last week. And I guarantee you a young quarterback watches that play and says, okay, we got everything. I got the matchup I want and tries to anticipate and throw it. Sergeant falls down. Howden goes house. That and the is game is tied oh. instead of them settling for the field goal. Their first point since the first half. And extending the lead to 10 as we take a look at today's All-State Mayhem moments. You know, Minnesota for much of the season, seems like everything has gone right. Some missed opportunities today. It's hard to call a 50-yard missed field goal a missed opportunity, but there have been them scattered throughout the game. And your most reliable players have had some of the most critical drops right there. And maybe none bigger than that on a fourth down. And Durr right there, a chance to take three points off the board. As you said, those were the plays that PJ's guys have made over the course of the season. And now they're up against it with seven minutes to go and got to be awfully, awfully sharp. Yeah, look, and a lot of them tough plays. But again, plays they've made. Here's Morgan looking to throw. Open man comes loose, Rashad Bateman. But in this building, 
if you're going to beat this team and this program in this place in November, those are the plays you got to make. They get 17 yards here on the first play of the drive. Morgan moves over 300 for the day inside seven minutes. Sophomore from Kentucky trying to lead him from behind. Into tight coverage, but he finds Johnson. This time he hangs on into Iowa territory on a 14-yard pickup. <laughs> into tight coverage? <laughs> Might be an understatement, huh? <laughs> Watch this in-cut versus zone coverage. The freshman right underneath. Wow. I mean, that is a window that you would say, don't ever throw into that. How about this quarterback play today? Incredible. And look at the concentration through contact for Smith to haul that in. Big time. 6.20 and counting from the Iowa 42. Tyler Johnson, man, Oof, way to respond also. They run it, Rodney Smith. Not a whole lot there, and there hasn't been really at any point today. Chauncey Golston with a tackle on Smith as we wind inside six minutes. Everybody the last six weeks has played Minnesota has said the same thing. we got to take them out of their game. They want to run it, want to run it. They've run it 65% of the time. We've got to make them one-dimensional. Well, with a 10-point lead and over the course of this game with Iowa leading, they largely have. And Tanner Morgan has been up to the task, and protection will be critical in the final five minutes. Morgan got rid of it just in time and incomplete behind Bateman. Hankins in coverage, third and eight. You can just feel these windows, right? When you become one dimensional, what happens as a quarterback is those windows you're throwing into are tighter and tighter. And with the game on the line and every play and possession so critical, those windows get even smaller. On third and eight, Morgan has time, finds an open man out of the backfield, Ibrahim. So they convert on Ibrahim's first catch of the day, a gain of 16. Yeah, we speak of matchups, you spread it out everywhere and you get your running back in a one-on-one. -on -one. And that was on the senior Welch right there, who's had a marvelous game coming down and tackling in the run game. But they've had that one in their back pocket. Kirk Scirocco, the veteran coordinator, and been sitting on the right time and the right opportunity to maximize that matchup. And what a big one. First down from the 25 with a twist up front. It's picked up underneath Bateman. Stopped by Colbert. Second down and five for Minnesota. Morgan off his back foot finds Demetrius Douglas who came into the game with eight catches on the season. He's got four today. They spot him a touch short. Into the red zone they go and this has told the story today. Yep. Actually, Brock, boy, they spotted him with enough for a first down. Yeah, and I think that's why the faithful were groaning with that spot. First and 10 of the 15 yard line. The Minnesota on red zone trips today, 0 for 3, scoring touchdowns. On the slant, Tyler Johnson breaks to the outside, inside the five, fighting his way just short. But the Gophers have it first and goal with 356. Lots of zone coverage, keeping everything in front of you. And Johnson, as he's done most of the night, has just been a difference maker. A lot of times you see Minnesota go to the Wildcat here. Instead, they leave Morgan in. This is another 15 or 20 seconds because of that extra effort to tackle that's burning off that clock. Down near three and a half. Better hurry. Two to snap it. 
Wow. Didn't get wow, it off. Wow, wow. P.J. Fleck went running up. They're going to avoid the penalty, but burn their second timeout. It's just a killer. So I'm really surprised. Typically after big plays in today's college football, what do you see? Nine out of ten to get on the ball. Just get right on the ball and get that push and QB sneak or, or, or trust one of your big powerful backs. But trying to check with me and get to the right play and watch that entire play clock wind down and much like the first half that affected some of the decision making now down to just one timeout left. Had they managed the timeouts a little bit better during the first half, they may have been able to get a touchdown instead of a field goal. Correct. Remember, they kicked the field goal on first down just because they were out of time, having had to burn the timeouts much earlier in the half. Kind of an unnecessary spots, you would have thought. Yeah, and again, especially off of a big play, right, where, where you just put it all the way down to the half-yard line, trust 400-pound right tackle. Just get up under center or, or just pound the ball into the zone. It was 25, 30 seconds in the timeout. So much more valuable than just trying to get to the right check with me play. They do go to the Wildcat here. Seth Green, 13 rushing touchdowns out of the Wildcat in his career. Direct snap to Smith. Breaks the plane. Touchdown. Minnesota not finished yet. Back to within a score with 327 left. Yeah, this big old Wildcat heavy package has been so good for the Gophers this season. And for the first time, they finally cracked that end zone down into the red zone. Took a little bit of time, took an extra time out. But it certainly put themselves in a position here where the pressure goes back on the home team to try to finish. Walker. Missed it. And so it'll take a touchdown for Minnesota to remain unbeaten. Rodney Smith in for the touchdown. Minnesota back to within four. Tanner Morgan goes six of seven on that drive. Smith gets in for the touchdown. 29th of his Minnesota career. Now the hands team on the field. And Minnesota lines up like they're going to kick it on side with just one timeout. And it is Brock Walker who just missed the extra point. First onside attempt of the season for the Gophers. Pops right 10-8 waiting. And Iowa's got it at the 47. We look back at the touchdown. That Iowa sideline was really upset that there wasn't a false start penalty. Yeah, and these tight ends have a huge responsibility in this Wildcat package to block down. Watch Keeft. He's off before the snap. In a real time, I, it, it struck me. You had to look at it a few different times. And usually when it's that obvious, when that end man is out before everybody else, that side judge looking down at it throws that flag. And Kirk Ferentz was certainly wishing he would have that time. They get the ball back here. 326 to go. Minnesota just one timeout. Makai Sargent with a gain of three on first down. Okay, a couple things here to keep in mind with three to go. Realize what that burning that timeout cost you. And cost you. It cost you about 50 yards. You wouldn't you wouldn't have had to onside kick it if you have that extra timeout with three to go. Secondly, you've got one of the country's best kickers, a record setting kicker on the Iowa side. Right. So once you make that decision now, boy, you're playing. You have to get this stop because unlike your kicking situation, these Hawkeyes so trust Keith Duncan cost you 50 yards, maybe more importantly, cost you 40 seconds and ability to stop the clock again. Sergeant almost slipped free. Winfield Junior clipped his foot third down 241 and counting. And for Minnesota, it's got to happen here. Unbeaten season on the line. 9 0 for the first time in 115 years. One of the five unbeatens left in the country. Sight set in a division title, perhaps a conference title. Trip to the Rose Bowl, college football playoff, all right there for them. But down four, needing to stop here on third and four with two plus left. And Iowa will take their timeout after the play clock runs down. There it is with 206. 
I'm not against trying to run the ball here, by the way. Especially if I spread it out a little bit and I trust my tackles and some of my people. A work out of the gun. Tyler Goodson, who started the game at running back, left with an injury earlier. So it's Makai Sargent, who's actually the best pass protecting running back. Third down for the Hawkeyes. They'll look to throw. Stanley pressured and brought down at the line of scrimmage. Sam Renner, Du Treadway, De La De Badir, they were all in on it. And there's the final Minnesota timeout with a minute 59. And it was the blitzing Sori Marin, the linebacker, a Minnesota crew that continued to push the envelope. And because of this pressure coming off the side here, Stanley can't step up and deliver it over the middle of the field. That to me is why I would not have been against a run play to just try to spread it out to diagnose some of that pressure. You knew that they were going to bring an extra defender. And ultimately Tanner Morgan gets exactly what he wanted tonight on a night that's been uphill all night long in this building. He's going to get a chance if they field this punt to do what he's dreamed about doing and keep this dream season alive. March it right down the field. Now five of the nine wins have been decided by eight points or fewer and find themselves in another tight one here. Game they trailed 20 to three at one point. They're back to within 23 19. And the punt team will come out for Iowa well out of field goal range here at the 42 yard line. And you better be smart defensively not jump off sides. And get a free five yards. Keep your defense, safe defense on the field. Sure handed Douglas back to return the punt from the grad transfer, Michael Sleep Dalton. It's a good one. Did they keep it out? They did momentarily, but then it bounced in. Almost had a shot to pin him inside the five, but instead a touchback. And a minute 52 to decide this one. Oh. Right through the hands of Devante Young. And then Terry Roberts had a chance as well. And here we go, Joe. A lot of eyes watching this one right now. Tremendous effort, but the ball clearly I think breaks the plane there. Here we go, 80 yards to keep this season alive. Keep the dream alive for Tanner Morgan and the Gophers. And all about protection because there's so many matchups they've taken advantage of over the course of the evening, but you've got to block it first. Drive starts from the 20. He pumps short. He's pressured by Epinesa. He shed him, but then got sacked. Joe Evans got there. Now with no timeouts, the clock continues to run inside a minute 40 on the fifth Iowa sack of the day. And it runs all the way inside a minute 30. Down to a minute 20 and some confusion for the Gophers. Pressure again and sacked again. Epinesa this time. There's an injured player. It's Tanner Morgan. It's actually Cole Kramer that comes into the game. Cole Kramer at quarterback over the middle incomplete. He was looking for Bateman and it's fourth down and 21. Wow. And no signs of Tanner Morgan. This is going to be Cole Kramer. The true freshman. Last chance for the Gophers. Kramer lofting down the field. Jump ball. It is picked off by Riley Moss. 
And Minnesota's dream season ends here at Kinnick. Riley Moss making his first start of the season. Gets the interception that will help Iowa seal the deal and end Minnesota's unbeaten year. Something about this place and the cultural sustainability that P.J. Fleck loves to talk about Iowa, what he wants to build in Minnesota. But the faithful here have watched this before. You take down a top 10 team, you endure it. And man, was this a ball game back and forth all night long. And ultimately, it was Epinesa in that front four that got home on the game-defining drive to nail it. And Minnesota will still have an opportunity to win the division. But the unbeaten season ends as Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes beat Minnesota 23-19. Their third top-ten home win in the last four seasons.